On a dark, cold night in the late 70s, my dad's truck broke down about an hour from home. He started walking and put his thumb out hitching for a ride and was soon picked up by a middle-aged man in a brown sedan. And as my dad gets in the car, he says, Yeah, thanks man, I appreciate the lift. However, the driver didn't respond. Uh, I'm trying to get further north, uh, where are you headed? However, the driver didn't respond again and just begins to drive. Without even a look, the driver locks the doors and puts his hand on my dad's upper thigh and starts squeezing. My dad was 24 or 25 years old and he worked in construction, specifically drywall. He wasn't a tall man, but he was barrel chested and stocky. My dad turned to face him. I'm not into that. I just need a ride. The driver didn't move his hand, and after about 10 seconds of silence, Let me out of the car! The driver still isn't responding. He doesn't even look at him. My dad then grabs his hand and peels it off of his thigh. Let me out of the car, motherfucker! I will kick your fucking ass! Let me out right now! My dad was absolutely ready to strike him down. Without a word, Again, without even looking at him, the driver pulls over, unlocks all the doors, and my dad jumps out. The driver then peels off, and my dad eventually arrives home and tells everyone about what happened. The family doesn't believe him, though. A few years later, he's dating my mom. They're watching news which is covering the arrest of a serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. According to my mom, my dad then went pale and started jumping out of his chair, shaking violently. He starts yelling and pointing at the TV. That's him! That's the guy who picked me up! My mom, unlike the rest of the family, believed him immediately. My dad wasn't much of a liar or a prankster. He was pretty blunt and was rather quiet and didn't particularly crave attention. Now, I was so intrigued by this incident that in the late 90s, I read a few books on Gacy, including the one written based on his interviews. Gacy picked up countless hitchhikers over a multi-year period in the 70s. Sometimes, he would pick up hitchhikers and take them wherever they wanted to go without incident. The timeline, details, geography, MO are all consistent with my dad's story. My theory is that Gacy picked up my dad thinking he was younger than he was, and then he tested out my dad's reaction. My dad was a bit older than Gacy's target age of 18 to 20 years old. When my dad fought back aggressively, Gacy figured he probably wasn't worth the trouble and possibly also realized that my dad was not as young as he looked. A few years ago, my husband and I were at an event, and we started chit-chatting with a couple seated at our table. For some unremembered reason, I told this story. The female half of the couple turned white and stared at me, mouth agape. She said that her uncle has an almost identical Gary encounter. I'm just very sorry for those who were unable to escape. This was told to me by an old family friend, Nikki, numerous times as a kid growing up as one of those life advice stories to keep in mind through the years. And to her credit, I've never forgotten it. Whenever anything associated with hitchhiking comes up, it always springs to mind and probably always will. Makes me a bit ill whenever I think about it, actually. So Nikki, who grew up at the same time as my dad in around the early 80s, was a young woman in her mid-twenties. She's one of those real kind-hearted souls, always willing to help out another in a time of need, you know? So while she was driving out into the city, about a two-hour or so drive from the town, she saw a man walking down the side of the road. As she neared him, he turned and, in typical hitchhiker manner, stick out the old arm and thumb. Nikki then pulled over and asked if he needed any help. She told me that he was really polite, if not a bit shy, when asking for a lift into the city. Nikki gave a big smile and popped open the passenger door for the guy, who tossed his bag into the back seat and buckled up for the ride ahead. They talked pleasantly for most of the trip, about friends, the news, etc. You know, happy small talk. She felt that they were getting along really well and even bought him dinner at the pit stop a little over halfway there. 
She says he seemed really flustered and awkward when she paid, but one of the things that they had talked about was money and how he was pretty strapped on cash, which was why he was hitchhiking in the first place. But eventually, he relented and went on their way. As soon as they got into the city, he thanked her profusely for the ride and food, and asked to be dropped off once they hit downtown. Before getting out, he asked for Nikki's phone number so he could contact her someday and catch up. Thrilled at the prospect of knowing how her new friend was faring, Nikki wrote it down for him and drove off with a warm feeling of a good deed done. Now, what really freaked me out as a kid was how nice everything seemed to have worked out. Nikki gets this crease in her forehead and a funny look in her eye when she tells me the next part, about how a week later she got a phone call from her driving buddy. He didn't let her get a word in edgewise after hello and told her that she should thank God that she was raised so nice because when he first got in her car, he was planning on raping and murdering her once they got to that pit stop. That he was going to steal that car and dump her body in a ditch further down the road and go on his merry way. But after she talked with him so kindly and treated him to dinner with a smile on her face, he couldn't bring himself to do it. He didn't think that he could live with himself after doing that to such a nice lady. And to please, Nikki, please, never, ever pick up another hitchhiker. And then he hung up the phone. Nikki never got a call from him again. When she tried redialing the number, she got a payphone. And so, Mr. Hitchhiker, I know I'm never going to meet you, but... I'm going to listen to the advice you gave your driving buddy and never, ever pick up a hitchhiker. So I'll just start by saying that my dad is a bit of a character. All my friends loved him growing up because he could entertain you just by talking to him. This attitude is what initially led me to question the legitimacy of the story for a long time. Now that I'm a bit older, I could tell this one cuts very deep every time we make him tell it. Usually, he talks in a very upbeat and active tone, but when my brothers and I heard him first tell the story, or talk about it in general, his tone just completely changes. It's as if the color just rushes from his face. It's pretty obvious that he just doesn't enjoy talking about it. In the story, he was about 18 at the time. From pictures, he seemed like an athletic, approachable teen. He was living in the Gary Whiting area of northwest Indiana. Sometime later in the evening, my dad, who's been a smoker for roughly 50 years of his life, decides to hitchhike to a local convenience store. He has a knack for talking about places or events as if he were there. An odd thing to do, considering the shop was only a couple miles away from his house. Eventually, a truck pulls up to the side of the road. It was a baby blue pickup truck to be exact. There were two men in the truck, probably both in their 40s or so. Pretty normal looking, to my dad at least. He said that the driver was a bit burly, and sort of looked like Jackie Gleason. The truck was only a three-seater, so the man in the passenger side had to move to the middle. No words spoken, apart from the driver asking him where he was going. This didn't strike my father as odd, so he proceeded to sit in silence, not suspecting anything. Suddenly, out of nowhere, one of the guys randomly burst into laughter. According to my father, this wasn't your ordinary laugh, but something much more diabolical. Surely enough, the driver looks at my father with what he claims was the devil's eyes, not chiming in with the laughter. And as you could suspect, they start to go to a different route. My dad knew they weren't heading anywhere near the desired destination. He was trying to play it cool, wait for his chance. Luckily, a couple minutes later, they finally hit a red light. The driver slowly crept his arm across the cab and starts caressing my dad's neck. I guess his fight-or-flight response kicked in as a surge of adrenaline came about. He unlocked the door and bolts out, no looking back. He said he hid near a local church and watched as they drove around looking for him. Some years later, my dad was watching the news when the mugshot of a man popped on the screen. His heart sunk. That man was undoubtedly the same man who had picked him up hitchhiking. 
that man was John Wayne Gacy.